Chile plans to nationalize its vast lithium industry. Ba based? Based? Chile to confirm state-owned lithium company, state firm to control world's largest lithium resources, copper giant Kodoko to play a key role. How, how based is this going to be? Are we doing this well? Mexico nationalized its lithium deposits last year. Indonesia banned exports of nickel ore, a key battery material, in 2020. We're going to end the world over, um, over uh, uh, electric cars, I swear to God. How suicidal is Chile's leader feeling? Yeah. Third world is dark. Well, Chile isn't the third world. The last scraps of lithium we will fight over. Yeah, unfortunately, solar energy may be like crazy cheap right now, but we still don't really have a solution to the energy storage problem. The largest batteries that we have, as I understand it, are gravity batteries. We have uh, water tanks that we use to, to store. I mean, technically that can do it if you just build enough of them, but like... <sighs> Just can't beat water batteries. They're so inefficient. They're like, it's what is it, like 21% efficiency, even if you have like hydraulic power on the way down or something? Or like on the way, like it's, yeah. Not in my backyard. It's just a pool. <laughs> what about atomic battery? That's not a thing that I'm aware of. Gas is unfortunately not very cost effective right now. Well, solar is the cheapest energy. Yeah, but if we ever actually invest in battery research and MFG, then it would be fine, right? Um, so guys, the way batteries are made, like lithium ion batteries, is that there's, so as I understand it, there's basically like the chemical properties of the material have differences in like electron transferability that allow for the maximum storage of electrons. And then like the greatest amount of that move through the battery based on like the differential between the two. But this is like a fundamental property of the materials used. Um, I don't, I, I don't know how far battery tech can go. There's probably an upper limit. Um, at least if we're using like chemical batteries like that, right? Gravity batteries might be the best way to handle things, but I don't know if there's a better way. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we just need lots of water. I've heard about molten salt batteries, but I don't know how like, I don't know how manageable that really is. Isn't maintenance on solar really shit? Like panels only have a lifespan of 15 to 25 years. That's pretty good. 15 to 25 years of ultra cheap energy for free. Yeah, no. Solar panels are really cheap right now. Um... You know, we'll we'll see. It may, yeah, maybe some new battery tech comes out. I mean, that'd be really, really nice. List of emerging technologies in energy. That's a lot. Lithium air battery. Okay. Home fuel cell. Gravity battery. Okay, this is pretty vague. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd have to look into it. There's a ton of research going on on batteries right now. Because the, the, the basic problem right now, okay, do you guys know how power plants work? Basically, a power plant, let's say like a coal power plant, a coal power plant is always running. Um, it doesn't stop running. It just, when you use electricity in your house, the stuff I'm using to power my setup right now, the electricity that I'm using right now was generated from a local power plant the same nanosecond, not the nanosecond, but the, the same instant that I use it. Um, it's not being stored the electricity is produced and instantly distributed into the grid where everyone takes it as they need it. Um, there's a lot of waste to this because often more energy is put into the grid than is actually used, but like, all right, that's, that's, the, that's the system, you know? Um, and sometimes there's like buffers, like kind of like water towers, but for energy where you have batteries that store a bit. The problem is batteries are expensive and not very efficient, you know? Um, the problem with solar energy is that unlike a hydroelectric dam or a gas or coal power plant or whatever else um it doesn't work during the night <laughs> and while you can transfer energy from further away uh there are losses in power over long distances and the distance around which the planet orbits is the whole planet is the the whole planet has a nighttime so you can't like always just have energy being transferred from the sunny parts of the planet. It, we're not tran like people in Europe when it's nighttime aren't going to be transferring energy from like Alaska or some shit that just doesn't it, does, it doesn't work that way. Um, so the problem with the the problem with solar energy is that you need a battery to hold a lot of it, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of it for cloudy days and for uh, bad weather and for damage and for nighttime. And uh, we just can't build enough batteries for that. We just can't. Right now, solar energy is more of like supplemental to, and, and then we use like coal or whatever for the general use, you know? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really just a matter of, of how it's used. 
wind is do well wind has the same problem but wind is less efficient than solar well yeah the largest batteries that we have are mechanical batteries where it's like it sounds it sounds really dumb but it's 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 quite literally um it's literally like uh um you have like two two tanks of water right um no and then normally you have all the water you have all the water pooled down here but then if you have excess energy being generated by the grid you can pump that water up to here which takes a lot of energy and then you have it like higher up and then when you want to get energy back cuz it's a battery so you want to get the energy back you have the water all up here and you just have a hydroelectric system run through a series of turbines and shit as it moves back to this tank, you know? And we have gravity batteries like this that are like the size of lakes, basically. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. What are gravity batteries? I just explained it. There's also the concrete block tower. Yeah, but that's retarded. The concrete block tower is completely retarded. Yeah, Adam something did a video on it. So apparently, the gravity battery is back in the spotlight. I've seen news articles about it pop up recently, and now it's time to stop this grift before things get out of hand. This will be short and sweet, but if you want a more detailed take, you can check out Thunderford's video, link in the description. Uh, so what is the problem with this thing? In energy production, especially with renewables, we have periods of energy surplus and energy deficit. You need to put surplus power somewhere so you can use it during a deficit. But how do you store all that power? Do you build a giant battery? Yes and no. This is where the gravity battery comes in, in this case called energy volume. The concept itself sounds reasonable. You have a bunch of cranes in the middle with concrete blocks lying around. When you have surplus energy, you use it to stack the blocks. When you have an energy deficit, you lower them down and spin a generator in the process. Here's their promotional video where the CEO talks about saving the world while stock music plays in the back. How to solve one of the largest global problems facing our planet today. How to store renewable energy in both an economical and sustainable way. Some a solution eliminated in the transportation sector so we could end the world's reliance on Robert Picconi, the CEO of Energy Vault. All right, so why is this incredible? It's so fucking dumb, man. I can't, oh man. Stupid. First off, the blocks. There are about 10,000 of them on this picture. Let's assume each one is about 20 cubic meters based on how big the ones were in their promotional video. That's 200,000 cubic meters of concrete. Producing one cubic meter of concrete takes 0.41 tons of CO2. To make this entire thing, you're looking at 82,000 tons of CO2 emitted into the atmosphere. Neat. There are ways to produce bricks in an environmentally friendly way though, as they show us in their video, but this would not be an option everywhere, plus they look like they would fall apart much sooner. Also, have you heard about this thing called wind. On most of their promotional CGI, the thing is next to wind power plants, places where winds are strong. In that place, you have a giant six-sided crane with some very long wires, and you'll be trying to stack blocks with high precision. I see. Now this is where the proponents of this project would say, the software. Software will handle it is the tech bro equivalent of I have faith in Jesus. The energy vault also comes with a 30 to 40 year warranty. I would assume even shorter since that would be 30 to 40 years of banging blocks together. According to the website, the thing has the capacity for 35 megawatt hours. So a single 3 megawatt wind turbine operating at say 25% on average for a whole day nets 18 megawatt hours. Now I'm no engineer, but if I understand it correctly, one giant tower of concrete can almost store the daily output of two wind turbines. Nice. So this design clearly has a lot of issues that need resolving. So let's do it. First off, the wind problem. How do we stop the wind from blowing us around? Forget that stupid six-armed crane design and use a giant gantry crane instead. It's far more stable than a regular crane. Alright, so we now have a stable crane, but we haven't solved the wind problem completely. The wires are still affected. So instead of having this thing on the surface, let's dig a hole for it. There we go. With this we solved the wind problem. This hmm? also solved the second problem, capacity. Digging a huge pit below the gantry lets you stack blocks much higher and thus store more power. How come you people never thought of this? Seriously, why even have a regular crane arranging things in a circular formation? Why not a gantry with a square formation? It's not because the circular design looks vaguely futuristic on the CGI, right? It's, it's not that, right? The third problem is the blocks. They are subject to damage and erosion and need to be replaced eventually. We could solve this if we had a material which doesn't break or erode. This is the point where Elon Musk would say, synthetic self-fixing hyperdiamonds, and I say, 
water. So why don't we just fill our big hole with water, put some water tanks on the gantry and pump the water up when we have an energy surplus and let it down through a turbine when we have a deficit. Come to think of it, what if we just dug a hole somewhere higher and let the water down from there? That way we don't need gantries or water tanks. Let's call this new invention Pumped Storage Hydroelectricity. <sighs> There we go, we revolutionized energy storage, I guess. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I also have a Patreon. E there we go. Now you know. Thank you, Adam. As always, Adam something, thank you very much for bringing much needed clarity to this issue. This guy is great. Did you know that Adam something uh, was a fan of mine before he started his channel? And now he has over a million subscribers? I'm not mad, by the way. Just in case you were wondering, I. Yeah. Put, hey, don't put in the newspapers that I'm mad. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm actually not. I'm, I'm super so, I'm so happy. I, I still feel like such a fucking cunt, by the way. Um, because he had his million subscriber live stream hullabaloo channel, brouhaha. And I missed it because I misunderstood what the time window was. I thought it was a 24-hour stream, but it wasn't. It was eight hours, so I didn't show up during it. And I really wanted to show up and tell him that I thought it was really good. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, like, I, I still feel, like, really bad about it. I just, I misunderstood.